This is the second part of our discussion on harmonic functions. So far, we have defined what are harmonic functions and we also discussed some simple examples of these functions. Now, these are real valued functions satisfying certain conditions. Now, we all know that we are doing complex analysis and our main aim is to study complex valued functions. So, why are we studying these real valued functions over here? In fact, there is a very strong relationship between these harmonic functions and some special type of complex valued functions known as analytic functions. Okay? So, in this section, we are going to discuss that relationship. Now, uh, let's recall ourselves. How do we define harmonic functions? So, a real valued function H of two variables X and Y is said to be harmonic in a given domain D. Okay, so it's a connected open set okay, of the XY plane if, so there are two conditions. Number one, throughout the domain, it has continuous partial derivatives of the first and second order. So, if uh, the function H, so when we calculate its first order partial derivatives, in, in, in other words, partial H by partial X and partial H by partial Y, then both are continuous. Also, their second order derivatives, uh, for example, um, the double derivative of H with respect to X or double derivative of H with respect to Y or the mixed partial derivatives, so they are all continuous functions. And the second condition is, that uh, H must satisfy the following uh, partial differential equation. Okay, so given as this. Okay, now uh, let's try to understand uh, the relationship between harmonic functions and analytic function. So this is our first result uh, that uh, relates uh, these two kinds of function. So the result says that if we are given a function with the real part U of XY and imaginary part V of XY, and it is also given that this is analytic. So this function f of z is analytic in a domain D. Then its component functions, the component functions u and v are harmonic functions in D. Okay. So uh, in other words, uh, given, so what are we given? So given is f of z with real part u of x, y and imaginary part v of x, y is analytic in domain D. Okay. So, this is analytic in this domain D. So, uh, recall, so what is a domain D? It is a connected open set, open subset of the complex plane, in fact. Okay. And uh, now, what do we need to show? So, we need to show that this u of x, y, which is a real valued function, of two variables x and y and this another real valued function which is the imaginary part of this complex valued function. So, both are harmonic functions. Okay. So, that's what we need to show. Uh, and uh, if we want to show that these are harmonic functions, then we need to show two conditions. So, the first condition is uh, its uh, first and second partial derivatives uh, must be continuous and uh, they must satisfy a partial differential equation, a very special partial differential equation. Okay? Uh, now, we are going to use a fact from future that we will prove in future. So, what is that fact? So, if, okay, so uh, it's a fact from future. Fact from future. Okay, so if a given function f of z, which is a complex valued function with real part u of x, y and imaginary parts v of x, y is analytic at a point, uh, let's call that point to be z naught, then uh, its components Okay, so then it's components. So when we, uh, so components means u of x y and v of x y. So its components have uh, continuous partial derivatives. Continuous partial derivatives of 
of all order. Okay, so we can take any order, uh, partial derivative, and all of them are going to be continuous of all orders at point. Okay, so we are talking about the point Z naught. Okay, so if a function is analytic at a point Z naught, then all its components have continuous partial derivatives of all orders. So this is the important thing. Uh, but we are not going to need uh, continuity of partial derivatives of all order uh, according to the definition of harmonic function. We are just going to need uh, that its first and second partial derivatives must be continuous. And of course, this implies that u of x, y and v of x, y have continuous partial derivatives partial derivatives of order 1 and 2 so that's what we need if we want to show that these are harmonic functions so the first uh, part is satisfied uh, and in the second part we want to show that u of x y as well as v of x, y satisfy a certain partial differential equation. So let's go to the second part. So now we want to show, okay, so now we want to show that u x x plus u y y must be equal to zero and v x x plus v y y is equal to zero. So how do we show that? Uh, of course, uh, the function is analytic. This is the assumption. So we are going to use this thing. And uh, since f of z is analytic, uh, the function is analytic. So this implies uh, the, the real and imaginary uh, components satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations. Okay, so this implies u of x, y and v of x, y which are the real and imaginary components of this function satisfy Cauchy Riemann equations. Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. And uh, of course, what are the Cauchy Riemann equations? So ux must be equal to vy and uy must be equal to y minus vx. And, uh, of course, uh, what does this imply? So, this implies that uxx must be equal to vyx and uyy must be equal to minus vxy. Okay. Now, uh, we, we know a result from uh, multivariable real uh, calculus uh, that uh, uh, if the second order partial derivatives are continuous, uh, then these mixed derivatives are uh, equal. So, Continuity of partial derivatives imply continuity of partial derivatives partial derivatives implies that this v of y x must be equal to v of x y. So if these two are equal, then u x x must be equal to. So this implies that u x x must be equal to v y x and v y x must be equal to v x y and we also know that v x y is equal to minus u y y so this implies u x x is equal to minus u y y and of course this implies that u x x plus u y y is zero okay so uh, that's the second condition which u of x y satisfy so u of x uh, y is a harmonic function and on the same lines uh, we can show that uh, v of x y satisfy this second condition and hence we have proved that uh, this uh, these two components real and imaginary components of this analytic function are basically harmonic functions okay so similarly for v of x y so that's one relationship uh, between the analytic functions and harmonic functions. Okay, let's see some uh, simple examples. We are given this function f of z is equal to z square. Now we can calculate its uh, uh, real and imaginary components by taking z to be equal to x plus iota y. Okay, so if z is equal to x plus iota y, then f of z becomes x plus iota y square, and this is going to be equal to 
x square minus y square plus iota 2xy. And uh, we have seen that uh, this f of z is analytic. Okay, so it's a polynomial. In fact, it's an entire function. It is uh, differentiable at each and every point of the complex plane. And uh, since f of z is equal to z square is an entire function. So this implies that this f of z is analytic everywhere. Okay. Okay, everywhere. Okay. So if it is analytic everywhere, then its real and imaginary components must be harmonic functions. So this implies that uh, this uh, u of x y, the real component, which is x square minus y square, and the imaginary component, which is v of x y equal to 2 x y, are harmonic functions. Okay, so that's one uh, way to find uh, many harmonic functions. So we know that there are many, many uh, analytic functions. So, for example, we can take uh, polynomial functions or rational functions uh, given that the denominator does not vanish at that point. So, if we are given an analytic function, then finding its real and imaginary components gives us harmonic functions. So, similarly, we have this example of function which is uh, e raised to power minus y sine x plus iota e raised to power minus y cosine x. Now, this is an entire function. It means it is analytic everywhere. So, this implies, okay, so this uh, property implies that if we take the function u of x, y to be equal to e raised to power minus y sine x, then this is harmonic because this is the real part of an analytic function. So, this is harmonic function. And similarly, we can discuss about v of x, y and it is the imaginary part of this analytic function. So, this is also an harmonic function. And we have discussed uh, this uh, function in our previous, previous discussion, where we discussed that uh, this is in fact uh, gives us the temperature uh, in a plate uh, lying on a complex plane, etc., etc. Now, what we have proved so far is, given an analytic function with real part u of x, y, and imaginary part, v of x, y. And if this is analytic function, then its real part u and imaginary part v are harmonic functions. What about the converse of this fact? In other words, if u1 and u2 are two real valued harmonic functions, and if we want to construct a function from them, uh, let's say u1 plus iota u2, is this an analytic function? So, in general, it is not true. But what are the conditions or can we find conditions on u1 and u2 such that these are harmonic as well as when we construct a complex valued function from them, then it is analytic. Okay, so, our next discussion is based on this aim. So, uh, we are given two functions, two xy and x square minus y square. So, we have seen that uh, since they are real and imaginary components of a analytic function, in fact, uh, f of x plus out of y is equal to x plus out of y square gives us x square minus y square plus out of 2xy. So, these are real and imaginary parts of this analytic function. So, that is why these two are harmonic functions. Uh, but if we construct the following function, okay, so let us call it uh, f1 and uh, this is the function f. So, the real part is 2 of xy and the imaginary part is x square minus y square. Now, notice that in f of z is equal to z square, the real part is x square minus y square and the imaginary part is 2 xy. Now, we have reversed uh, their uh, uh, property that 2 of xy is now the real part and uh, x square minus y square is the imaginary part. Now, what about this function? Is this analytic function? Now, it happens uh, that it is not analytic anywhere in the complex plane. So, uh, there is some sort of rule. Okay, So, uh, if we take these functions to be uh, x square minus y square to be real and 2xy to be imaginary uh, in this way, then this is analytic. 
but uh, if we change their uh, role uh, of imaginary and real part, then it is not analytic. Okay, so there must be some rule uh, that under which uh, this uh, function becomes uh, analytic. Okay, so starting from some uh, or two harmonic functions. Now let's try to find that rule or find that uh, property. Okay, so in fact that property is known as harmonic conjugates. Okay, so if uh, we are given two real valued functions u of x y and v of x y, such that these are harmonic functions in a domain D. And if the next property is very important, the first partial derivatives of u and v satisfy Cauchy-Riemann equations throughout this domain D, then v is said to be harmonic conjugate of u. Now, this is very uh, important here. We are not saying that u is harmonic conjugate of v. We are saying v is harmonic conjugate of u. So, this is very important. Okay? So, we will, we will see some examples where this concept will be very clear. Okay. Now, uh, the next theorem uh, relates uh, these two conditions now, uh, the harmonic functions and analytic functions. So, a function f of z with real part u and imaginary part v is analytic in a domain D if and only if v is harmonic conjugate of u. And once again, we are saying v is harmonic conjugate of u and it cannot be replaced uh, with the statement that u is harmonic conjugate of v. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how to prove this thing. So, if we are given that f of z, which is equal to u plus out of v, is analytic okay, in domain D. So, analytic in domain D means mm, uh, it is differentiable at each and every point in this uh, connected open set D. Okay. So, what do we want to show? So, we want to show that u and v are harmonic. Harmonic functions. And, okay, so there are two conditions of harmonic conjugate. They must be harmonic functions and v must be harmonic conjugate of u. And v is harmonic conjugate of u. So, that is what we want to show. Now, since this is an analytic function, so it must satisfy Cauchy-Riemann equations. So, analytic function okay, so implies that C are equations. Okay. So, in fact, if it is differentiable, then it satisfies CR equations. And since it is uh, differentiable at each and every point in the domain, so it's mu it must satisfy CR equations. So, what are CR equations? So, ux must be equal to uh, vy and uy must be equal to minus vx. And these are exactly, this is exactly the second condition of uh, the v being a harmonic conjugate of u. So, this second condition is proved now. Now, uh, to prove the uh, converse part, we are going to uh, need this result that we have uh, uh, proved and discussed in our previous discussions. So, if this is uh, uh, a function and if its uh, first order partial derivatives exist in a neighborhood and all partial derivatives are continuous and satisfy Cauchy-Riemann equations, then f is differentiable at that point. Okay. Now, given v is harmonic conjugate of u, Okay, so now, given V is harmonic conjugate of U. So, when we say harmonic conjugate, it means that uh, uh, V and U are harmonic functions and uh, they satisfy uh, Cauchy-Riemann equations. Okay, so, and... Uh, when we say harmonic function, it means that uh, the first and second partial derivatives must be uh, continuous. Okay, so so this implies uh, first partial derivatives are continuous. Partial derivatives of v and u are continuous. Of course, the second partial derivatives are also continuous, but we are going to need this condition. Okay, so, to prove that uh, uh, the function is differentiable everywhere in the domain D. So, also, harmonic conjugate implies that u and v are 
uh, basically uh, satisfy the following condition that uh, ux is equal to vy and uy is equal to minus vx. So this is really coming from the definition of harmonic conjugate and uh, u and v being harmonic. Okay. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then clearly f of, S, f of z is differentiable at each and every point in the domain. And if it is differentiable at each and every point in the domain, then f of z is analytic. Okay. So that's the relationship between uh, harmonic functions and analytic functions. Now suppose we are given two real valued functions, x square minus y square and v of x, y is equal to 2x, y. Now uh, these two are harmonic functions, so this can be proved very easily. Now over here, u x is equal to v y and u y is equal to minus v x. So that's why this implies that v is harmonic conjugate of u. And once again, notice that also u is not harmonic conjugate of harmonic conjugate of v. Okay, so since v is harmonic conjugate of u, so this implies u plus out of v is analytic. So that's how we uh, construct uh, analytic functions from harmonic functions which are harmonic conjugate as well and we construct harmonic functions from analytic functions. Now in this part we have seen and explored the relationship between harmonic functions and analytic functions. So this helps us in finding harmonic functions from analytic functions and analytic functions from harmonic functions. Now in our next discussions we will see how to actually find harmonic conjugate.